hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel being engineer this is the part 10 of our series moment of inertia and probably this is the last part of this series of moment of inertia and now we have reached up to the part 10 it's mean that we have covered nine parts already it's mean that we have co covered too much before this part and if you are new to this part you are requested to please watch the previous videos to have the better understanding of the topic moment of inertia and terms related to moment of inertia like theorem of parallel axis, theorem of perpendicular axis etc. The link of those parts are given in the description. Please watch those videos too. In this video, we are going to calculate the moment of inertia of inverted L section. As you can see here, this is the inverted L section. Here you you will get confused there are a lot of lines crossing each other it's like a mixed pickle but as we start the topic this is the step by step process and you will not get confused why what what are these lines for what is meant by x1 and x2 or, or, or if you have watched my previous videos you must have the idea what is this x1 and x2 so don't get confused I will tell you everything step by step so you are requested to please watch the complete video to get the understanding of the topic we will be using these formulas that is theorem of parallel axis and moment area method to look at the centroid or center of gravity of the figure so let's start our today's topic to make it easier for you guys let's have an example find the moment of inertia of inverted l section about axis that is x axis and y axis for given section passing through the centroid the first thing that we noticed in this example is that we have to find the moment of inertia of l section about both axes that is x axis and y axis and the most important thing is for given section passing through the centroid that is we will have to look at the centroid of the figure first as here we have a section this length is 16 centimeters the total height is 18 centimeters the width of this section is 2 centimeters and the width of this section is also 2 centimeters so as I told you before that this is the step by step process so don't miss a single step. First of all we will look at the position of center of gravity. So now to find the center of gravity of a section we will use these formulas that is x dash and y dash which is called as area moment method. So we will be we will be needing a1 x1 and a1 y1 similarly a2 x2 what is a1 we will discuss these one by one first of all we will find a1 let's say that this is the figure number one and this is the figure number two so now we have divided the whole figure into two regions that is region number one and region number two and a1 is the area of the region number one so the area of a rectangle is equal to length multiplied by width that is this length multiplied by its width that is 2 multiplied by 16 which comes out to be 32 centimeter square similarly area of a second figure that is its length 16 multiplied by its width that is 2 centimeter it is again 32 centimeter squares now this is the centroid of the figure 1 which is called as g1 and this is the centroid of a figure 2 it is centroid that I have discussed in my previous videos that bisecting this angle and by bisecting this angle the dissecting point of these two lines is called as centroid of a rectangle or any region we named it like we named it as G1 and the other centroid is G2 so for reference axis we have drawn the axis x axis and y axis but in the question we have asked about to find the moment of inertia about centroidal axis are about the center of gravity these are just reference axis so as you can see here we need to find x1 x2 y1 and y2 
and the a1 a2 we have already calculated so what is x1 x1 is the distance of centroid of a first figure along x axis towards y towards y axis so this distance is called as x1 that is 16 minus 2 divided by 2 that is the width of this figure is 2 and if we divide the figure into two two uh, two figures it will comes out the centroid so x1 is the distance of centroid of first figure from y axis that is 15 centimeter similarly what is x2 x2 is the this distance that is centroid of a second figure from y axis x2 that is 16 divided by 2 which comes out to be 8 centimeters sorry here is a mistake it is 8 centimeters so now to find y1 what is y1 y1 is the distance along y axis up to centroid of a first figure as you can see here this is the y1 distance so it will become 18 minus 2 divided by 2 which comes out to be 8 centimeters now to find y2 what is y2 the distance of centroid of a figure 2 along y axis this distance is called as y2 so it will be equal to 5 plus 12 divided by 2 which is equal to 11 centimeters so now if we see these formulas we have calculated all the required things that is a1 x1 a2 x2 y1 and y2 so by putting these values one by one we will get x dash that is 11.5 centimeters similarly to find y dash by putting these values that is the area of a figure 1 distance of y1 area of figure 2 and by simplifying these we will get 12.5 centimeters now what does these value tell us these values tells us about the centroid or center of gravity of the whole figure that is the combined centroid of these two regions which is this point that is if we see x dash x dash is 11.5 centimeters so this total height is 18 centimeter and its half will be 9 centimeters which which locates uh, around about here and if we move 2 centimeters above so this is the distance so this is the distance that is 12.5 centimeter for y uh, y dash that is along y axis and similarly for x axis this distance is 11.5 centimeters yani its total distance is 16 centimeters and half is 8 centimeters if we move 3 centimeters uh, along along uh, x axis so this point is the 11.5 centimeters so these two lines inter intersecting point of these two lines is called as the combined center of gravity of the whole figure so this is the point about which we need to calculate the moment of inertia above of this inverted L section so let's proceed now to find moment of inertia about x axis that is centroidal ixx we need to calculate k1 what is k1 k1 is the this distance that is centroid of a figure 1 and combined centroid of a whole figure this distance is called as k1 how to calculate this this is equal to y dash minus y1 if we know that this if we know this distance that is y dash and by subtracting y1 if we subtract this distance we will get the remaining distance which is equal to k1 and it comes out to be 4.5 centimeters now to calculate k2 what is k2 as you can see here that is the distance between the combined centroid of a whole figure and centroid of a second figure this distance is equal to k2 and its formula is y2 minus y dash and it comes out to be 4.5 centimeters so by putting the values that is moment of inertia about x axis is equal to this is the theorem of parallel axis 
and it is equal to IGX plus AK square. So now here we have two regions that is one region one and region number two. So the formula will become IG1 plus A1K1 square plus IG2 plus A2K2 square. Now IG1 this is the moment of inertia of any figure about centroidal axis which I have explained in detail in the previous parts. So the moment of inertia about centroidal axis of a rectangle is equal to BD cube divided by 12. Similarly the region 2 is also a rectangle so its formula is also equal to BD cube divided by 12. Now putting these values B that is the base of the first figure that is width of the first figure which is 2 cm and the height or depth of a second figure is 16 cm total height is 18 and if we subtract this 2 cm from 18 it will become 16 cm 16 cube divided by 12 and the area of A1 and K1 we have calculated in the previous slide so by putting these values similarly for B2 and D2 B2 is the this height this width of the second figure and its length is 16 centimeters so it will become 16 into 2 cube 12 divided by 12 and area of a second region plus k2 which we have calculated in the previous slide so by simplifying these values we will get the value of moment of inertia above this inverted l section about x axis this is moment of inertia about x axis for this inverted section so now to calculate i y y now to calculate i y y we will have to calculate r1 as in the previous slide we calculated k1 and k2 for i y y we will calculate r1 what, what is r1 now this is the horizontal distance k1 and k2 are the vertical distances R1 and R2 will be the horizontal distance as you can see here the distance of centroid of a first figure and the distance of a centroid center of gravity of a whole figure this distance is called as R1 which is equal to x1 minus x dash and it comes out to be 3.5 centimeters so now to calculate the distance of G2 and centroid this is the point G2 and this is centroid to find this distance that is R2 as you can see here the distance between the centroid of a whole figure and centroid of a second region is equal to x dash minus x2 which comes out to be 11.5 minus 8 and it is equal to 3.5 centimeters now guys don't get confused as I have told you before that this is a step by step process don't miss a single step and try to write it down as I am explaining uh, step by step so that you um, it will make easier for you to get understanding of the topic so to uh, IYY is equal to IGY plus AR square similarly now here we have uh, two regions so the formula will become IG1 plus A1R1 square IG2 plus A2R2 square by putting the values now this formula will become db cube in the previous uh, slide for ixx this formula was bd cube now the cube is on base that is width of the region so similarly this will also become db cube divided by 12 and by putting the values of these one by one d d1 that is height of a region number one and width of a region number 1 divided by 12 now these are the predefined values which I have also discussed in the previous parts you will have to remember these values for different figures so by simplifying these values we will get moment of inertia about y axis for this inverted L section so guys I, I hope you have understand the topic for more videos you are requested to please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you can get video updates.